Hi there, this is Mark Idleman, speech-language pathologist, and welcome to this video regarding singing and speaking. And this applies especially towards children with speech and language delay and, of course, adults with aphasia. Many have asked me about the relationship between speaking and singing and what my opinion was regarding the use of music therapy as an adjunct or a replacement to speech and language therapy for those with speaking difficulties. Many have invested a great deal in the process of music therapy and singing and hoping that it will have a very positive influence on the ability to speak. Having worked with people who have had brain injury and aphasia, as well as children who have had difficulty speaking, I have fully explored the use of singing as an adjunct to speech therapy and have found it to be a very enjoyable activity that builds confidence in uttering lyrics from songs once learned. I mean, it's wonderful for a person who has difficulty speaking when engaging in singing, finding that their speech or their ability to utter words is nice and clear, and they seem to have a remarkable memory for the words and the lyrics. So many lay people have thought, well, gosh, this is a very viable uh, way to help my loved one speak. Singing is dependent on what we call rote memory, rote, R-O-T-E, which occurs when one repeats something, words or lyrics, over and over again throughout one's childhood and lifetime. Sometimes the words don't even make sense, like many of the songs we grew up with. But it didn't matter to us then because it was the melody that we enjoyed. And being able to repeat a song or a catchy jingle develops through rote repetition. Singing helps reinforce and stabilize the learning of a song. It seems like a miracle, doesn't it? When one who is unable to construct a thought with words can sing words normally. Wow. Whereas speech is quite a different process. One must gather a thought in the mind. They have to develop it. Then they have to construct it. And then what they have to do is they have to go into the brain depository. That's where all the words are. It's called the lexicon. It's like a big vault, and every word that we know is inside that vault. And so what the person has to do is they have to think about what they want to say. Then they have to think about how they want to say it. And then they have to go into the bank depository and select in order the words one wishes to say in those thoughts in a split second and at a very conscious level. Now here's the rub. Singing is rote, but speaking requires formulating thoughts into words. It's quite a different process. For speaking to improve, one must develop the skills of speaking which require the repetition of thoughts, the repetition of vocabulary, needs, desires, feelings, and expressions with words throughout the day in one's activities, each and every day. That is what caregivers and therapists are learning with the teaching of talking training and method. It's very similar to going back through the process of how we first learned to speak. 
If you remember, many of you who were parents or soon to be parents, you'll remember that children first develop single words. They talk in single words all the time. And then what happens with time? They expand that single word to two words and then gradually increase the number of words they speak as each step and as each utterance is practiced and learned. To me, the other day I was thinking about this, when a person has a stroke and at one time they're able to speak and they have quite an extensive vocabulary, it's like a computer crash which requires reformatting of the hard drive and unfortunately having to re-input all the data. There are no shortcuts to that and one must sadly start from the beginning again and plug in each chunk of data. Words, word pairs, phrases, sentences, numbers, mathematics, all kinds of things. And then there is the faith required that the hard drive will accept the new information. Now one must be cognizant of the fact that singing is quite unlike, it's quite different from actually speaking. And the steps to better speech requires the process of cued talking whenever the words are necessary, very much like what mothers and fathers do when children are first learning how to speak. Mothers and fathers deal with rhymes, deal with teaching vocabulary as they go through the day, repetition of particular words and vocabulary each and every day in normal daily activities, and thoughts that are expressed in conversation, in books, in lots of material, and especially parents who want to enrich a child's language with new experiences, taking them new places, pointing out new things that, of course, have new vocabulary, and then those words are repeated and repeated often. You know, as a sidelight, when I was writing this article, I was writing away, and about an hour later it was all done, and then I went through to edit the article, and I had hit some type of key, but guess what? All of a sudden, all of the data was gone. The article that I had spent over an hour on all of a sudden disappeared, and no matter what I did, I couldn't find it. Well, after a few expletives and thinking, I thought, no, I don't want to do this again. It just took too much work, too much effort. I'm not going to rewrite it. It's just too much work. So I went about my business, I checked Facebook, and then I saw an article from a woman who was very frustrated with what to do for her mother, who had lost her speech due to aphasia and her curiosity about singing therapy as a viable therapy to speech loss. Well, when I read that, guess what? I came to the realization that I had to rewrite the article. A similar thought most probably occurs when people who have been speaking for years and years and years all of a sudden lose their ability to speak and are faced with the thought about therapy. I'm sure they must be thinking, oh my goodness, I don't want to go to therapy. I've already learned all that stuff. I don't want to go through all of that work to try and speak again. You know, I'm sure it was very much like that for them. But then I realized, as many of them do, that you can't give up. You just have to do 
whatever it takes. And once you have an understanding of that, and once you have an understanding of what you have to deal with, you just do it. You know, as stated above, music is a nice therapy for anyone, including those with speaking difficulties. It's enjoyable, it helps build confidence, and it's a very, very good way to feel good. I mean, I love singing, and I love listening to music because it helps me change my mood. And so, therefore, I think music therapy is definitely a good thing for anybody. However, often it's provided by musicians who may not have any real formalized training in the rehabilitative process or a true lack of knowledge about the process of speech and language and the understanding of the practice of speech and language and what it requires to help someone rebuild the act of speaking. So music therapy, yes, I think it's a good idea, but I don't think it's the answer to helping a person regain the ability to speak. That should be done by a trained professional who really knows what they're doing when it comes to speech and language stimulation. So I hope that this has been educational for you and helpful, and I hope that you have a great day today and a great year ahead. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me at Mark Edelman at teachingoftalking.com or come over to our website at teachingoftalking.com or Facebook Teaching of Talking. So on that, I want to wish you the very, very best and thank you for listening. Bye-bye now. Thank you.